Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achano, and welcome back to my OpenGL series. So today we're going to be talking all about the renderer and we're going to be writing our first renderer, which is pretty exciting. So far, all we have is in our main file, we've basically just got a list of, well, classes that get created and then later get bound and then get drawn and it's just all kind of a mess and none of this is going through a central pipeline which is really the big issue that we have here. It's still perfectly fine for us to do something like this but well instead of us actually telling someone hey I have some data I would like it drawn we're having to do all of that work and that's a problem for a few reasons. First of all it's bad because we're doing all the work every time and if we want to render something again well we have to make a draw call for that and we have to go through that kind of pipeline all by ourselves again and again and again which is bad because we're repeating code, it's error prone, it's also just annoying all of those problems. And then later when things get more complicated and we have multiple rendering targets or even something simple like blending, we have no kind of central glue that ties everything together and actually keeps everything organized and debuggable and, and running smoothly. And that's kind of where the renderer comes in. The renderer is like the factory where we say, here are some parts. I want you to make something for me. I literally made that up on the spot. But you know what? I guess it works. So we're going to stick with that. So basically the idea here is fairly simple. We have a bunch of data in the form of like a vertex buffer, an index buffer, a shader, whatever. And we want to be able to give that to someone and say, hey, this stuff that I'm giving you, I want it to appear on the screen, please. And that's kind of what the job of a renderer is. Now, of course, it gets a lot more complicated than that, and we can tell the renderer a lot of things, but to keep it simple, our goal for today is really just to move away the last remaining OpenGL call that we actually have inside our main file. If we take a look at our code, you can see that pretty much all of this is abstracted away. I mean, we have like vertex array, vertex buffer, we've got index buffer, we've got shader, we've got all of this stuff that is just completely abstracted away into our custom classes. However, well, we, I guess we have two open gel calls. We've got the gel clear, which should be handled by the, by the renderer. And then we've also got this draw elements. So this is basically a draw. This is something called a draw call. As we've discussed previously, it's where we actually tell open gel, I want you to take whatever's bound and just draw this on the screen somehow. And that's what GL draw elements does. That should be something that is taken care of by the renderer, as is that clear thing. But the clear thing's kind of a minor thing, which we'll probably get into later. Anyway, how, how are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna start by making a renderer class. And then inside that renderer class, we're going to be writing a draw function, which basically takes in a bunch of arguments. So the data that actually needs to draw something and then draws it on the screen. And from that approach, even though that might seem like a really simple thing, we can grow that into, into something extremely complex and extremely powerful. So let's get right into the code and check that out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is right click on source here, hit add new item, I'm gonna make a header file called renderer.h and apparently I've already got the renderer.h and renderer.cpp yep that's where we put all of our OpenGL stuff so that's great so inside our renderer.h I'm just going to make some room here and actually make a class called renderer now whether this class should be static or it should be a singleton or anything like that that's it's up for debate I mean some people like to actually make this class a singleton and make sure there's only a single instance of that some people don't like to do that because maybe they might want to have multiple instances of the renderer that's perfectly okay it's, it, it's not neither approach is really wrong it's just how you want to do it we're just gonna make this not kind of, I'm not gonna make every method here static or anything like that. We're just gonna treat it as if we can have multiple instances of this if we so choose to. That might be something you might want to do if you have multiple layers or something like that inside your actual like graphics application. But there's no reason for us to kind of go overboard and just start making everything static here. So I'm just gonna treat this as if it was a normal class. So our first goal is really just to make a function called draw, which takes in a bunch of stuff. So let's think about what we actually need to draw something in OpenGL. Well, we need a vertex array we need an index buffer and we need a shader that's what we know so far right the vertex array actually has the vertex buffer bound to it so we don't need to wor worry about vertex buffers at all but we do need to have that index buffer the vertex array of course as I mentioned and also a valid shader so those three things are really all we need now the index buffer has the index count and if we kind of pass in an, in an index buffer into this draw function we can kind of assume that we want to draw that entire index buffer because if we wanted to draw like 
a partial index buffer, we'd probably pass in an index buffer which just had a partial set of indices. So over here in draw, I'm going to write vertex array. I'm gonna pass all these by reference, by const reference. So vertex array VA, const index buffer IB, and then const shader reference shader. Cool, so there we go. And we can make that const as well since we won't be modifying anything. Into the renderer, I'm going to include all of our uh, classes here, vertex array, index buffer, and shader. And that's looking pretty good to me. So in renderer.cpp, I'm going to write that function. So void renderer draw. I'm just gonna let Visual Assist fill that in for me. I'm gonna mark that as const as well. And now we can actually move our draw call here. So let's go back to application and see what it is we actually need to move. So we have this vertex array binding, this index array binding, and this shader binding. Now what's interesting here is we're actually setting a uniform. So how is that gonna work? with our draw function. Well, we'll come back to that later, but for now, let's just grab all of this code. I'm going to go into renderer.cpp. Let me just close these other files. I'm gonna paste that in here like that. Don't worry about the set uniform. So we have our shader binding, our vertex array binding, and our index buffer binding. And then finally, back in application, we'll steal that GL draw elements, just like that. And so we'll do GL call, GL draw elements, triangles. Now, instead of six, we're gonna have index buffer dot get count. Um, unsigned int, I think we assumed that this is always going to be an unsigned int, as you can see here with the data. So we will just basically hard code this to be unsigned int. But in the case of you maybe having unsigned short as your index type, you might want to actually pull that out of the index buffer or, where, or wherever you're storing that. And then finally, we're drawing everything as triangles for now. We will definitely get into kind of different modes of rendering in the future, but for now it's just gonna be triangles because that's what we're doing. Okay, cool. So everything looks pretty good in our code. You can see that compiles just fine. Uh, we're not going to bother unbinding any of this. Um, in a more traditional, like this whole concept of unbinding, I really should make a video dedicated about that, about this, but like unbinding stuff in OpenGL, not strictly necessary. It, it is useful for debugging, I will say that. Um, but, and it might reduce some bugs maybe, but ultimately speaking, Unbinding stuff in OpenGL is just a waste of performance. You don't really need to do that because before we draw the next thing, we'll be binding all of this stuff anyway. So there's no real point. More kind of complex systems might have bind, like unbinding in debug mode and then in release mode, the unbind calls just do nothing. That's one option. And we might implement something like that if we were actually making a game engine. But for now, we're just gonna write our code like this and it'll be fine. You could probably argue that it would be wiser for me to actually just put unbinding code here because again, we are strictly kind of talking about OpenGL here. We're not really writing a game engine, so we probably don't really care about performance or anything like that. I do like to keep my code kind of lean though. Um, and just having three more lines to unbind all of this stuff needlessly, like I just don't want to clutter the code up too much. So that's the reason why I'm not doing that here. Okay, so back in application, we still have this uniform issue. Um, there's nothing really stopping us from just doing this. Like we can still do this and then we, we don't need to bind any of that. And then finally for the renderer, what I'm gonna do here is just create a new instance of this renderer class, just like this, renderer, renderer. And then over here, we're just going to call renderer.draw. We're gonna pass in our vertex array. We're gonna pass in our index buffer and we're gonna pass in our shader, just like that. And so we're basically telling our renderer here, hey, I have a vertex array and an index buffer and a shader, please draw that onto the screen. And that's kind of what our function does. So if we come over here and we actually run this application of ours, we're gonna get a whole bunch of errors here because something's not found. It's probably because we're actually including renderer in here. And then we're all, that's being included into uh, renderer as well. So we kind of got a, a, a cyclical include thing going on here. So let's quickly go ahead and check that. Um, vertex rank plus vertex buffer layout, because we do need that. That is a reference though, so we could eliminate that. Um, let's see if, I think vertex buffer layout. Yeah, it's, the reason this happens is because vertex buffer layout calls a cert. I think that's the only reason we need renderer here, isn't it? Uh, well, actually, we also include OpenGL. Okay, sure. So to kind of solve this, what we'll do um, is we will actually go to vertexarray.h. I'm not going to include vertex buffer layout in here. I'm actually going to forward declare it by just typing in class vertex buffer layout like that. And then in the CPP file, I'm going to include 
vertex buffer layout just like that. So that way we don't actually include vertex buffer layout in here. The problem really is that vertex buffer layout includes renderer and then we include vertex array, which includes vertex buffer layout inside renderer.h. So it's like we're including renderer in vertex array and we're including vertex array in renderer and it's kind of, it's, it's getting into like an infinite loop of inclusion. Well, I'll have a C++ video about that available at some point in my life. Click there if it's there. So if we try and compile our code once again, we should be okay. All right, so back in application.cpp, we also have to include that vertex buffer layout. So I'll include that like that and compile our code. All right, there we go, it succeeds. Let's go ahead and launch this application and see if we get the same thing rendering. And you can see that we have the same result, great. A few more things that we can actually do to clean this up is we have this GL clear here. I don't really want to do that here, of course. So inside render.h, I'm just gonna write clear. And then inside the cpp file, I'm going to implement that function clear. And we'll just basically copy and paste what we have inside application, which is color buffer bit, just like that. Um, and we'll just call renderer.clear like that. And to be a little bit more correct, what I'm going to do is mark this function as const because of course it doesn't do anything, just in case we have a const render or anything like that. And if we go back to application, let's just see what we've done. So essentially what we've done is we've gotten rid of every single GL call I think that we have in this entire file, yep. And so what we've done is that whole rendering situation that we've had, we've basically changed, we've made some kind of drawing function so that we can just call draw with the appropriate data and then clear if we actually wanna clear our screen. We do still have this kind of issue here with the shaders where we actually still have to kind of bind the shader so that we can set the uniform to whatever we want every frame. I'm not a big fan of leaving that code in here. The only real way to solve that though is because we should, like the way that you would solve that is by using materials instead of shaders. So what we have in our draw function in renderer.draw, we're taking in a vertex array, an index buffer, and a shader. That's a bit weird. In a more traditional setup, we'd be taking in like, you know, vertex array, whatever, index buffer, that's all fine. But then we'd be taking in a material instead of an actual shader. And what a material is, is basically a shader plus a set of data. So a shader plus all of its uniforms, whether that be kind of renderer specific uniforms or kind of per object uniforms, like, for example, this rectangle's color would be like a kind of per object uniform that we actually have. And that would be stored inside the material alongside the shader. And so that way, when we pass in the material to the renderer, the renderer will basically bind the material, meaning that it would bind the shader and set up all the uniforms that it needs to, and then call the draw function for our vertex array or our index buffer and all that kind of stuff. So that's how it, that's how it should work. We don't have materials yet or anything like that. So for now we have to actually, if we want to modify a uniform for a shader, we have to do that ourselves manually. A little bit annoying. We might get into materials in the future. We definitely will in the game engine series, not sure about OpenGL series, but we probably will have to though. This is gonna get pretty complicated pretty soon. So for all of you people who are thinking this is getting, this is a bit simple so far, it's gonna escalate pretty quickly. Anyway, that's pretty much the renderer. We now have a class that we can keep adding to when we actually need to render more and more things. I can't wait to get into the more complicated stuff. Next up, we're gonna talk about textures and how we can render textures and load textures and do all of that stuff in OpenGL. And after that, I think we're probably gonna move on to things like 3D models or, whew, I don't know, there's so much, so much to do. I think 3D models is probably a good idea. We probably wanna move on to some kind of debugging interface as well and like a GUI system so that we can play around with that. Um, once we have 3D models, we can move on to lighting and cool stuff like that. We also need to do text rendering at some point, which is gonna be a nightmare, of course. I hate doing text rendering. I might actually write a library specifically to make text rendering easier for this series because it's really quite annoying and I don't really wanna deal with that. But then on the other hand, I need to show you guys how to actually make text rendering work without using libraries. So that's gonna be fun. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit that like button. You can also help support this series by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel. Huge thank you as always to all of the supporters of all of the videos that I make here on YouTube because they wouldn't be here without those wonderful people. Next time, textures. I will see you next time. Next time, next time. I'll just say that word a bit more often. Goodbye.